We're coming to the end of 2022. So what might be some of the key trends in sports science to look out for in 2023? Let's get straight into it already seen an expansion in the application of artificial intelligence in sports science across performance analysis, load management and injury risk forecasting. I myself am in the middle of a series in partnership with Zone 7 to explore what sports scientists need to know and be asking about artificial intelligence. But it's not just AI in terms of use in our data, but also other applications as well. At the end of November, the conversational AI model ChatGPT was launched and reached over a million users in just five days. As well as this conversational bot application, we see now research assistants like Elicit or AI driven organizers like Mem AI. So there are a multitude of AI applications they're expanding, not just for the sports science practitioner, but also for the academic and the student. So it'd be really interesting to see how the sport and exercise science community responds to all these applications. As data continues to expand in sports analytics, along with some of these newer analytics model types such as machine learning and AI, we need to continue to respect the privacy and the ownership of the data in relation to the players. And one of the key ways of doing this is through increasing their interest and engagement with the data. At the recent Men's World Cup at the end of 2022, we saw for the first time the enrolling of the FIFA Player app, which for the first time gave players direct access to their own individual performance statistics. We've previously seen Kevin De Bruyne hire his own analytics company to support him in his contract negotiations. So will we continue to see increasing engagement from the players and perhaps even them taking ownership of their own data and perhaps their own sports science? Another trend to look out for in sports science in 2023 is the increased attention around practitioner well-being. Now, this movement is perhaps in conflict to the traditional approach of embracing the grind and making work life sacrifices and being part of the hardest working staff in your sport or your league. But there is growing movement to take better care of your own well-being, given the demanding environment that we are expected to work in. And voices like Brett Bartholomew, Josh Fletcher, Dan Howes, to name only a few, are really lending their time and attention to mentoring practitioners to be able to take care of their own well-being in these settings. One of the biggest trends undoubtedly in 2022 that I think will continue in 2023 is the increased evolution and attention on women's sport. Of course, the England women's successes in the European Championships have, we've seen recently, led to over a 200% increase in att attendance at WSL games. But as well as the increased performances and participation and TV and media coverage, we're seeing more and more calls and more and more research being published on the female athlete. But of course, there is a lot of work to be done to understand the demands of the the evolving demands of the sport, as we saw through Dawn Scott and Paul Bradley's work comparing the FIFA World Cups in 2015 against 2019 and the massive evolution in physical demands. We've read editorials such as this one led by George Nassis about the challenges of the women's sport evolution and the research that needs to be done to understand the physiological responses, the recovery times, the effect of the menstrual cycle on physiology and performance, to name only a couple of areas of interest. But we're also seeing increased attention as well on things like female specific apparel and more investigation into sports bra designs and football boots for the female foot. I've previously written about the compromise, the trade-off between precision and practicality in sports technology, that generally the most precise, accurate technologies 
aren't the most practical and therefore we have to find the best compromise in this trade-off. But as technology continues to evolve, I think we'll see the upsetting of this trade-off. We've already seen massive evolution in something such so simple as the iPhone camera. So apps like Carlos Balsalobre's um, iPhone apps that he provides a suite of testing just through an iPhone. We also see technology such as Output Sport with whom I work that are really trying to provide precise, accurate, research-driven technology that is accessible to all, making sports science simple and scalable, therefore making precise, accurate data collection available to so many more settings. And I think this is going to continue in 2023. And what do you think of those top five trends for 2023? Is there any you disagree with or anything obvious you think I missed out? Feel free to comment below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back again soon with another Sports Science Insights video.